Hey, what's up everybody? Mark Walbeck here with Dev Slopes, and this is the video of all videos. It's the video that tells you to stop watching coding tutorials here on YouTube. So stop YouTube right now, pause the video, and leave. Just end it now. In fact, I'm gonna leave. Actually, I'm not gonna leave. I'm just kidding. I'm gonna give you some advice on why you should stop watching YouTube coding videos. Now, I tell people to watch YouTube coding videos all the time. So what does that mean? Okay, well, if you're somebody who's been watching video after video after video, and you feel like you're not making progress, this is for you. Please stop and listen to this advice. I have been teaching people to code for such a long time. And this thing happens to a majority of people, a majority of students. And what happens is they get sucked into this thing that we call tutorial hell, or course hell, or whatever you wanna call it. Basically, it's where we just keep learning, endless learning, and we never make progress. It's like we're spinning our wheels. And if that's you, I'm gonna give you some advice that can help you get out of that and help you actually have success. So I'm gonna tell you a story. So I have a dog. It's a big, huge 85 pound German Shepherd dog. This dog has a major polling problem. Like you take it out for a walk and it could literally take a grown adult and throw you across the lawn. Like it is so fast, so strong, kids can't walk it. It's very frustrating. So I'm the one that has to take the dog out for a walk all the time because no one else can handle the dog except for me, you know, cause I work out. So I take the dog for these walks and you know what? I get mad. I pull the dog back. I'm like, I'll show you who's boss as I yank on its collar and pull it back, get mad at the dog. You know what happens? Nothing. The dog doesn't listen to me. The dog just keeps doing its stupid thing. And then I repeat the process every day. I, I keep doing this thing where I, I just want the dog to change and the dog doesn't change and I keep repeating the same behavior and she keeps repeating the same behavior. Nothing happens. So I was really sick of this, really sick and tired of this happening. This is what I did. I would watch little snippets and videos on how to train the dog. I would watch these training sessions on how to quickly just train your dog. And then I just run out, and, you know, take the dog out and, you know, hope that I could make some type of change. It didn't work. Nothing was working. I was doing the same thing and getting the same results, which was absolutely nothing. So I said, okay, I'm going to take this serious. I believe I can train this dog. It's a smart dog. I know I can do it. Other people have done it. I'm going to take it serious. And I said, okay, here's what I need to do. I need to get dog treats and I need to get different flavors of dog treats. And I need to get uh, a slip collar and all of these things, right? I needed to get these things. But you know what I did? I didn't get them all. I just got, all I did was I grabbed some treats, just one bag of treats, and I didn't even get the slip collar. Well, you know what? The dog got sick of the treats. So, right, I didn't do what I was supposed to do. So then I actually went and I got the slip collar, and then I bought an assortment of treats. And then I got out seriously. This time I didn't bring anyone with me on the walk except for me and the dog. We just went back and forth on the street. We performed the training exercises. I wasn't watching any more videos. I wasn't trying to learn and then doing nothing. I just went and did the things that I needed to do. I did the hands-on exercise, and I actually took the time to do it. It wasn't casual. This was not a normal walk. This was a training session. I said, I am training the dog. And guess what? In one session, the dog reduced polling by like 70%. By the second session, like it was like 80% gone, all because I had the tools. I had more progress in two days because I was focused and using the right tools than I had been in the previous you know, six months of walking this dog. So what is the lesson here? Well, it made me realize that this is a lot about how it's like to learn to code. We watch videos and we watch more videos and we watch more videos and then we don't feel like we're getting ahead. We may even watch complex videos, data structures, algorithms, and take things to the highest levels, and we don't remember it. The reason for this is because we are not built to just retain pointless information. We need to learn, we need to apply, and then that knowledge is reinforced. So I have some practical tips for you today. Five tips for you today. Stop watching YouTube videos, and you can follow these tips and hopefully have some change in your life. Here's tip number one. Don't spend more than one month watching courses or videos. Don't spend more than one month doing this. What I mean is don't put a whole bunch of time into all these videos and courses and say, I'm gonna build something, I'm gonna code a few months down the line or when I'm ready. Tip number one is do not watch videos for more than a month. Stop right there, that's your limit, okay? Number two, when you've hit that month, I want you to build a project. This is a project that's gonna stretch your skills, something that interests you. This could be a Bitcoin wallet, this could be a cryptocurrency, 
you know, tracker. This could be building your own dating app or your own to-do app. You could be building something that is just fun or exciting or game, whatever. Whatever you've been learning, build a project in that realm and with that technology. A project that interests you from start to finish. Keep in mind, you're not watching courses anymore. Remember, you stopped. So now you're building the project. Now you can go online and find help and resources, Stack Overflow, overflow things like that, that's fine. But you're not watching videos anymore, that's the rule. You're now building, you're building that one thing. Step two is you're gonna go build that project. What that's gonna do is it's gonna take everything that you learn and it's going to sear it into your brain permanently. That's what it's gonna do when you build a project. Now, you wanna take things to the next level, right? What I want you to do for step three is to go do coding challenges to upgrade your skills. Okay, coding challenges are gonna bring your core programming skills up higher. If you're somebody who's like, you know, I wanna be a better programmer, but I don't know how, coding challenges are how you're going to do that. And there's a whole bunch of things you can search. You can go online, search for coding challenges, code wars, things like that. You'll find a whole bunch of things you can do to upgrade your skills where you actually do it an easy one and then an, a harder one and a harder one and you get better and you get better, you get better. Do coding challenges, rank up your skills. So build the project, do coding challenges, get your skills up to a, a core competency level. You know, maybe spend a good month or so doing coding challenges. And here's number four, take on simple freelancing projects. I want you to go to upwork.com and I want you to apply for 10 to 15 projects that are in your technology realm. Now you may be saying, Mark, I don't have the experience. This is terrifying. You have got to do this if you want to have success. This is going to take the things that you learn and retain through building your project and now it's going to make it a reality. Someone's going to pay you for your work and you're going to be forced to deliver. This is going to do far more for you in learning to code and getting where you need to be than anything else you could do. For those of you who are huge risk takers, you could even start here. After you've done your month of learning to code, you could start by just jumping into a freelance project, getting in over your head, and then you're forced to learn. You're forced to build it. That'll teach you so much so fast. That's for those of you who are risk takers like me. That's the kind of stuff that I would do. But check this out. You could learn HTML and CSS, just the basics. Remember, one month of learning, right? One month of videos. You could do freelance projects on Upwork for basic projects. A $50 project here, a $100 project there. Hey, help make my website more mobile responsive. Like, you can do things like that with just even a month of experience. So if you spent your month learning to code, you built that major project, and then you spent some time, maybe another month doing coding challenges, you can totally do basic freelance work. And that's gonna help you bring it all together. It's gonna take all those skills and put it together and you're gonna have huge success. Keep in mind, the people who are still watching videos endlessly, they're not doing these things. Every student who has ever told me that they're stuck watching videos, they don't feel like they're making progress, they are not doing coding challenges, they are not building projects, and they are not doing freelance work. I've never had somebody who's doing freelance work say, oh Mark, I don't feel like my skills are getting up there. They never say that, it's because they are, their skills are getting up there because they're actually doing something. Makes sense, right? Tip number five is just learn as needed. So once you're doing the freelance work, if you need to buy a course, that's fine, but you're, you're getting it as needed. You're no longer just taking courses to take courses. You're no longer learning something just to learn something. I know this is controversial, but I believe with all the energy of my soul that learning just to learn something is a complete and pointless and waste of time. It is a complete waste of time learning just to learn something. Don't learn to learn something. Learn what you need to accomplish something. If you wanna be stuck in endless learning and never make progress, then yeah, buy a bunch of courses on Udemy, watch a thousand YouTube videos, and you'll get nowhere. You need to learn, just for a month though. You need to build a project, do coding challenges to get your core skills up there, your algorithm skills, and then what you need to do is you just need to keep at it with freelancing and hands-on things, getting paid for your work, and all those types of things, and then you just learn as you need. That's all you need to do. Of course, we can help you with some of those things at DevSlopes. Uh, we, have, we have a training academy where we train you and coach you for the 16 weeks. We do all those things for you so you don't even have to think. And if you wanna get your data structures and algorithm skills up, we've got the 30-day code challenge. That's 30daycodechallenge.com where you can actually uh, do daily missions and get those coding skills up. But even if it's not with us, that's what you need to be doing. You need to be building projects and you need to be doing coding challenges and taking on freelance work. But if you feel like you're not making progress and you're watching hundreds of videos and you're not going anywhere, you're not doing anything, if you're not taking on freelance work, follow these steps. You're guaranteed success. If you can get into freelance work level, if you're taking on paid projects, you can guarantee your success for the rest of your career. Now I know a lot of you are like, oh, I'm so scared, I'm, I just can't do that. I'm not ready yet. I, I'm gonna keep learning until I'm ready. Let me tell you a secret, you will never get there. 
you will never get there. The people who say, I'm gonna wait until I'm ready, they never get there. They just are stuck in the cycle. You're never ready when you take your first project. It doesn't matter. You need to take that project. You need to build your project. You need to take on the freelance work. You just have to do it. So stop watching YouTube videos. Stop watching tutorials. Stop watching courses. If you've spent more than one month watching videos and courses, stop it. Stop it. Start working. Okay, I'm gonna go through the list one more time. Don't spend more than one month on coding courses or on YouTube. Number two, build a project, something you're interested in. Number three, take coding challenges to upgrade your skills, like the 30daycodechallenge.com. Four, take on freelancing projects. That's gonna do more for your skills than anything else you could do. And five, then you just learn as needed. You, parry, you cherry pick, right? You find the things that you need for your particular projects. You don't just learn things to learn things. You find the things that you need and you're gonna be highly productive. So that's what I think you should do if you wanna have success. That's what I do. That's what I teach my students to do. And if you find this information useful, make sure to click that subscribe button and I'll make a whole bunch more of these videos and click the little bell so you can get reminded whenever a new video is uploaded. This is Mark here with devslopes.com and I'll see you next time.